Welcome to the Hannah Block Historic USO Community Arts Center on this wonderful holiday, July 4th, a celebration of America's birthday. But because of the virus pandemic, the building is closed. We won't have our usual open house at this point, but we want to take you on a virtual tour of the building, show you some of our exhibits, uh, why we're so uh, popular as a venue in this, in this city, and also to talk about the history of the building and why we are here today. So I invite you uh, to accompany me as I lead you on a virtual tour of the Hannah Block Historic USO Community Arts Center in Wilmington, North Carolina, our World War II history pride and joy. The USO building was a project of the U.S. federal government and the city of Wilmington. We dedicated this building in, and opened it in December of 1941 for the purpose of serving the many soldiers and airmen who were stationed in and around Wilmington in southeastern North Carolina. During the war, more than a million servicemen and women visited this building to enjoy rest and recreation from the dances to all kinds of activities that were held here uh, during the war. Outside, as you walk up to the building, you will see that it is almost the same as it was during the war. Almost all of these uh, exhibits in this lobby in particular are from World War II, and it's a, a, they're of the home front, of the Wilmington home front. So behind me, uh, you will see the woman for whom this building is, is named, Hannah Block, who is later known as Mrs. World War II Wilmington for what she did in entertaining the troops. But she was a uh, well-known New York uh, singer and uh, piano player, entertainer, and she used her skills uh, to help this community during the war. And she was very popular after the war and um, uh, in, in local politics and at one time was uh, Mayor Pro Tem of the city of Wilmington. When we walk in the building, we'll be greeted by a display of this late teenage hostess who was one of the stars of the building during the war. They were helped uh, entertain the troops. She's greeting us. This is what she would look like if she was, say, 19 years old. And um, she's going to dance with the soldiers and check out um, the, um, uh, the saddle oxes that she's wearing. Inside the building, you'll notice that the colors are the same as they were during the war. The floor is the same floor that uh, we had during the war. All of the, uh, uh, the rooms and doors uh, uh, have the appearance of what they were like in World War II. And the furniture that you see, some of it is original. Much of it is, is repro, which we had constructed in 2008 when we reopened the building. So you get that feeling when you walk in to this building that you're back in 1943 in World War II. And it's been a wonderful private-public partnership between historians, between the Thalian Association Community Theater and the city of Wilmington. We've been able to put this together and maintain the history to the point where not only do you feel like you're back in, in the wartime to a degree, it's used for so many wonderful things as a very popular venue. Uh, for Southeastern North Carolina. We have a wonderful blending here of the arts and history of Wilmington and Southeastern North Carolina. Our Wilmington community is exceedingly proud, not only of the history of this building, but how it's been recognized uh, by uh, the federal government. We're on the National Register of Historic Places, and we've also been recognized by the Historic Wilmington Foundation uh, because of its, uh, uh, not only its age, but its beauty and its contribution uh, to Wilmington history. Probably the thing that, that is the most important here is our memorial to those 258 uh, men from New Hanover County of all the services, including the Royal Canadian Air Force, uh, who lost their lives uh, during the war. Below that is a painting of a German slogan uh, painted by German prisoners of war. Uh, we had three German prisoners of war camps here during the war. We have a memorial to our two Medal of Honor recipients from New Hanover High School. The next is a, a memorial and an accounting 
of all of the new out of a county aviators who served during the war. That was pretty risky business. And we found later one woman, and she is not listed up there, but one woman uh, flew with the Women's Air Force Service pilots. Next, uh, we're proud uh, of this exhibit of one of the Liberty ships that was built in the Wilmington shipyard uh, during the war. And this is the most famous one, the SS Virginia Dare, which um, among other things, uh, shot down five German aircraft at one time when she was under attack. And there's a butcher block there, which holds a, a lot of extraneous items. That butcher block uh, came from the kitchen here in our USO building. Next is one of my favorites, the newspaper rack. We were fortunate to have saved the original newspaper rack, which is used in, like in libraries. And uh, we have replicas, repros, of some of the Wilmington newspapers. This is the one I guess where probably is the most significant because the Wilmington News reported that the war was over in August of 1945. Uh, the Japanese uh, had surrendered. And um, so we kept this over the years and it became part of our restoration project. This has not changed. This is the same, the same doors and, um, and the same entrance. Uh, again, the blinds and the furniture, uh, the repros and the furniture itself is uh, original, but the highlight over in that corner of the lobby is the memorabilia and decorations and art of a very, very prominent Wilmingtonian named uh, John Burney. He was um, uh, in the 63rd Infantry Division and fought in France. And these, these uh, paintings were done by a French friend of his after the war and given to him and to denote uh, action in the Alsace uh, region of France. And if you look right around the corner from there, there's a blackboard with chalk inscriptions of a lot of football scores. So we had that recreated. This exhibit uh, to uh, retired Lieutenant General uh, George Boylan, who was a Wilmington native. He was a, a, a B-17, B-24 bomber pilot during World War II, saw uh, action over in Europe, led, led bombing raids over Germany. And this is a tribute to his career. And it's a collection of really his military career in the Air Force. On the reverse side, is an exhibit that we're very proud of. This exhibit um, is unique, I think, in many respects, because uh, this is a photograph of the family which launched uh, this uh, Liberty ship in the Wilmington shipyard. And the name of the ship uh, was the, uh, uh, the Roger Moore. And you will see the champagne bottle wrapped in silk. It was used to christen the ship when it was launched. Also in that exhibit case is the uh, uniform of a Coast Guardsman from another very popular and prominent uh, Wilmington family at the time, and some artifact replicas of, of uh, cigarettes and toothpaste and items that uh, the, the troops could buy here uh, at the USO. Now, right behind me is a uniform of a, of a lieutenant who uh, was stationed at Camp Davis and went overseas and fought in Southeast Asia. He's a combat infantryman. Um, he um, uh, visited our USO, uh, met a, a woman who just lived right down the street on 2nd Street. After the war, he came back here and guess what? He married her and stayed here un until, uh, he, uh, until he died. And uh, it was a wonderful relationship. If these walls could talk about all of the sweet love stories and the, and the sweet nothings and the promises made and maybe the kisses stolen and, um, and the hearts that were broken. <laughs> anyway, uh, he represents that. We're now in the Linda Lavin uh, studio and it's named for a very strong supporter for years of not only the theater arts in town, but preserving the history of the building, the uh, Tony Award winning actress, uh, Linda Lavin. Well, the highlight of the exhibits in, in the Lavin studio, to me, is the piano that Hannah Block played during the war. And believe it or not, it was saved over the years uh, by the staff here. And we uncovered it in 2008 uh, when we were renovating and restoring the building. And this is the one that she, um, that she uh, played on to entertain the troops. 
and um, it um, it doesn't play anymore, fortunately. But um, it does represent uh, her con one of her contributions to this building. Also, the photo mural, which was uh, produced and placed for us by uh, Screen Gems EUE Studio in 2008, which is a, a, a huge storyboard of, of what wartime Wilmington was like, based on life in, in the USOs, the 14 USOs in New Hanover County, 13 were white and one was black. It represents uh, the, the principal employer, uh, in fact, in the largest employer in the state of North Carolina, our shipyard, um, some, camp, some uh, war uh, propaganda posters, and I love this one right here. This is my favorite. I love this girl. She is my favorite, Rosie the Riveter. So that's a very popular meeting room. And during the war, it was used by the hostesses and the staff uh, to entertain the troops. They would play card games and chess. Uh, they would um, uh, listen to phonograph records, uh, even uh, cutting some phonograph records to send home uh, to their families. And there were uh, places for the, for the troops to relax in both uh, the Lavin and the Farrell Studios. In the Farrell Studio are the storyboards of the history of the building, and not only the history of the building, but Wilmington's role during World War II, our very prominent role in um, supporting uh, the war effort on the home front, and uh, copies of uh, newspapers, wartime newspapers, under glass and frame uh, to show the impact on, on the Wilmington community. The original floor, can you imagine how many people have walked on this floor? And uh, the original colors and such, I, I, I love it. Well, thank you very much uh, for accompanying me on this virtual tour today. If you're unable to visit anytime soon, you can certainly find out more information about this wonderful building by visiting WilmingtonCommunityArts.org. That's WilmingtonCommunityArts.org. Thank you again.